Hey everybody, it's Michael from Wahoo Comics here with another haul and speculation video. And as usual, I've got a bunch of books I'm looking forward to showing you. First of all, the book I am most excited about is this one, Tales of Suspense number 50. And this book is special because it features the first appearance of the Mandarin. And as you know, I love to collect first appearances of supervillains. And so I am super happy to have this one especially because he's one of my favorite villains of all time. When I first started collecting comics back when I was in the sixth grade, Marvel was doing this uh, company-wide storyline called Acts of Vengeance. And if you've never checked out that storyline, it's a really fun read. Uh, so basically all the supervillains got together and decided, hey, you know, instead of fighting the people we usually fight who know all of our tricks, let's switch up who we go after. And that way they'll be caught unprepared. And so like the Wrecker, who's also one of my favorite villains, uh, went and fought Iron Man instead of Thor, uh, and you know, so forth. And, and so one of the first books, and it might have actually been the very first book I read, and that whole storyline when I first started collecting comics, was Avengers 313. And that featured the Mandarin going against uh, the, whole, the whole Avenger group of Avengers. And if you know this character, he has ten rings, on, one for each finger and his thumb, and each one has a different power, so one like shoots out uh, lightning, one shoots out fire, one ice, uh, one rearranges matter. And as a kid, I thought that was the coolest thing that, man, this dude has like tons of powers. And so I've always loved him as a character. And so I'm super excited now to have his first appearance. And beyond my personal excitement about the character, I think this book is also a good investment. As you might know, an upcoming movie is Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Well, The Legend of the Ten Rings comes from the story of the Mandarin. And there's been a little bit of a retcon for the MCU. Um, the Mandarin is actually going to be Shang-Chi's father in the movie. Uh, and it was really cool that the day after I agreed to buy this, uh, I, the, the, the newest trailer came out, which for the first time showed the, the Mandarin actually in the movie. And it's really interesting. Uh, instead of having rings on his fingers, uh, he's going to have rings on his arm, like five rings on his arm. And, and I don't know if they're all going to have different powers or if they just all work together. You can see in the movie, like at least it like throws out some blast. Um, but uh, because of that, I think this is a good investment. I'm hoping it's a villain that sticks around uh, beyond that one movie. And I, I, I'm hopeful that it will because he's a, you know, just a famous villain, one of the best of all time. Um, so uh, I, I do think this book will climb in value. And so it's an investment, but also just something I, I personally love. All right, the second book. Is another one that also just I personally love, but that it also I think is a good investment. And that's this one, Avengers 47. And so this contains the first appearance of Dane Whitman, who in the next issue becomes the Black Knight. And I would love to get my hands on that other issue, 48, at some point, but I'm really happy to have this one. Again, this has a special place in my childhood. Um, so before I started actually collecting comics, there were a couple of Christmases where my parents uh, just bought from the J.C. Penny catalog, uh, which you know, if you grew up when I did in, in the '80s, you get in the J.C. Penny Christmas catalog. The Sears Christmas catalog was like a kid's dream come true. I'm sure, those things don't even exist anymore. But you thumb through and see all the new toys you could buy, and I'd point out a bunch. Uh, anyway, they would always have like you could get like 25 Marvel comics for like 20 bucks or something. And, and what they would do, they would send you. Uh, basically like all of October's issues that Marvel put out. So you get one Avengers, one Amazing Spider-Man, one Spectacular Spider-Man, one Conan, whatever it was that they were putting out that year. Uh, and so the very first time my parents got me uh, this you know, present, uh, the, the Avengers title that month was Avengers number 285, which in the middle of another really cool storyline where Zeus was angry at all the Avengers because his son Hercules had been injured in battle alongside of them and he blamed the Avengers. And so the storyline with the Greek gods versus the Avengers, really cool storyline. Uh, you should check it out sometime. Uh, but when I opened the book on the very first page, there's this full panel shot of the Black Knight. And so again, this is the first comic books I'd ever really read and he was the first Avenger I ever saw. And so I always just took a liking to the Black Knight. Uh, he's always, I always thought he was just a cool, underrated character. And it's it just that personal bias, I think. But um, 
you know, I, I've always liked him, and so I'm, I'm excited to ha- have this issue now. And, and like I said, it's also a good investment, I think, because as we all know, as I've talked about before, the Eternals movie is also coming to the MCU in November, and in that movie is going to be the first appearance of, of the Black Knight. Uh, Kit, he's going to be portrayed by Kit Harrington uh, for, and I think he signed a contract for six movies, so he's going to have staying power in the MCU, and so I expect this book to continue to climb in value, also issue 48, if I can get that one day. But if not, I'm super glad to have this one. And the story, I, I got both of these first two books from the same seller, uh, and I really appreciated uh, how he worked with me. So I found he had listed these online for a certain price and a certain grade, and I asked him to send me some pictures. And of course, usually a, a buyer and a seller are gonna have different ideas of what the grade of the comic is. And so I put the photo, photos in an in a f- online forum uh, and sent him uh, kind of the feedback from there and said, hey, you know, this is some other people thought the grade might be. Would you uh, consider reevaluating your grade? Uh, and I, I said, you know, if you lower the grade, I, I'm going to send these books off to CGC. And if they come back as the grade you have them listed at, then I'm happy to send you more money. And I've made that deal with uh, a few sellers before, but it's always been after I've done some business with them uh, so that they know that I'm a trustworthy guy and all this kind of stuff. But I had never bought from this guy before. So I didn't know if he was going to take that deal or um, if if he would just think, oh, I'm just somebody trying to rip him off or or what he was going to do. But I didn't feel like I could pull the trigger on on what they were listed at. Uh, But he responded very easy to work with. Uh, and said, hey, I'll sell them to you for whatever you think the grade is. And it was just blew me away uh, how quickly he, he agreed to that. Uh, and so, you know, two things, I'm gonna send him this video. So I want you to know that, uh, uh, that I will send you the money, extra money if uh, it, it comes back you know, closer to what, what the grade listed was. Um, but also that I really appreciate it and you definitely have earned more business from me. Um, I look forward to buying uh, some other things uh, from you. All right. Well, speaking of good sellers, I've also got some books from uh, the guy I've been buying from over a couple of months. I'll show you some of them. First of all, there's this one, the Thor 166, and this features the second appearance of him, who later becomes Adam Warlock. Yeah, Adam Warlock is a character that many are expecting to be in the MCU very soon, um, and so a lot of his keys are heating up. And so this is uh, you know, gaining steam. And of course, it's a battle cover between him and Thor, this awesome cover. And as I mentioned in my last video, battle covers are also uh, a popular thing for people to collect along with the second appearance. I also got All-Star Squadron 25, which I think is a super undervalued book. So I mentioned before, in general, I think DC keys are undervalued. Uh, but I especially think this one is undervalued uh, because it contains the first appearance of Infinity Inc., which are basically like you know, how the Teen Titans are like junior versions of the Justice League. These are like junior versions of the Justice Society. And along with their f- debut as a team in this book, it also features many of their actual first appearances. Uh, yeah, I've talked about before, if you can find a book that has multiple first appearances, then it's a great book to invest in because it only takes one of those characters to become popular for the book to really increase in value. And I think this book is set to really rise in value because some of these characters are confirmed to come into certain DC uh, movie and TV properties. So, first of all, you have Nuclon, uh, who was later renamed Adam Smasher, that is confirmed to be in the upcoming Black Adam movie, which I really have high hopes for talked about it the rock is going to be black adam he's i think he's a great fun actor i think the movie is going to be fun and great Um, and so that character is going to be in it so i think it'll take off then and then i just learned actually today that jade uh, is going to be in the second season of star girl which is a tv dc tv show so i think the book will pick up value as she debuts and in addition to that jade and obsidian are also the children of alan scott the original Green Lantern. And as I mentioned in my last video, there's a Green Lantern HBO Max show coming. I don't know if they're going to make Alan Scott or any of his people part of that show, but it could happen. Uh, and, and Jade at one point is actually, I think, even the Earth's Green Lantern. 
Um, so she has a big tie to that mythos. So at minimum, she's in Stargirl, but then there's the potential for her to also cross over into the Green Lantern uh, show. So anyway, super undervalued book, I think. And I've picked up a few copies, and I plan to pick up a few more. And the last book I'll show that I, I got from uh, the seller uh, recently, Secret Wars number two. This is another very undervalued book, I think. It features the first full appearance of the Beyonder. Uh, and so a lot of people think at some point there's going to be a Secret Wars storyline that's done in the MCU. And that, of course, the Beyonder would be a part of that. So you can find these in back issue bins. They're already starting to climb in price on eBay. But uh, I think uh, if you can find it for you know, $5 or under, uh, a, a really good buy right now. All right. A few other books I'll show you that I've picked up. Um, first here is this one I'm excited about. Tales to Astonish, number 95. Uh, and this is the first appearance of Walter Newell, who later becomes Stingray, who has you know, kind of a big part to play in some of the Namor uh, part of the Marvel Universe. Uh, and so, as I mentioned in my last video, based on you know, some uh, feedback I got in the, the video before in the comments section, uh, Namor is likely coming to the MCU, likely in the Black Panther movie, it seems. And so I don't think Stingray will necessarily be in that movie, but if Namor becomes a big part of the MCU, uh, I think he could. And so I think this, if you can get this for a good price, it's a good an investment. And I just think it's really cool. I mean, any kind of old Tales to Astonish book uh, that's in you know, pretty good shape. It's definitely you know, a, a mid-grade uh, book. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a cool book to have. I'm really happy to have it. All right, another group of books uh, that I've gotten are ones that are associated with the timekeepers who are characters that are at least at this point kind of in the background of the Loki show. We don't know if they're going to come to the forefront at some point. Um, in one video, in an upcoming video, I'll, I'll talk about Kang. You know, it appears maybe Kang is one of the timekeepers, but the minimum there are the, these characters in the show, in the background of the show. Uh, and so a lot of keys that are associated with them have started to heat up. And a lot of these, I've found all these in back issue bins for $5 or under. And so they're great investments at this time. And first of all, there's Thor uh, 282. This continue, contains their first cameo appearance. And there's some, you know, kind of discussion over some of these things, like what's the first cameo appearance and all this. But all these are definitely uh, spiked in value a lot. This one's Avengers West Coast uh, 61. It's kind of a funny story. This is my second copy. My first copy, actually, I got as a kid at that second batch of Christmas books my parents got me. And so I'm planning to, I haven't pulled it out. I gotta pull out and see which one is the, the better condition one. And then I'll end up flipping uh, the other one. But uh, if you can find this, yeah, yeah, $5 or less, great buy. And then the first full appearance of the Timekeepers isn't in this one. Avengers West Coast 62, the next issue. So all those, if you can find for $5 or less, uh, are, are great buys. And then finally, I'm going to conclude with my sleeper of the week, and that's this one, Black Knight number one. I picked this up for just a dollar. I picked up one a few months ago for $3. Uh, and so this is the first series, and it's just a mini series, uh, where the Black Knight is the star. Uh, like I said, He's coming into the Eternals movie. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, whenever, or at least mostly when a new character is introduced to the MCU, uh, fans of course start to look at their keys. And one of the things that have become really popular is to look for their first miniseries or solo series uh, where they are the star character. Uh, Captain Marvel was a big one that that happened to. Had a big jump in a one shot that uh, she was the star of. And this has already jumped in price on eBay. It's going for about $40 now, but it's in back issue bins because it has been worth you know, much at all for a long, long time. Uh, and so I'm excited to have a couple of copies. Um, I'll pro probably plan to sell one uh, close to when the movie's coming out and then hold on to one for my uh, personal collection. As I mentioned, that's kind of what I try to do, buy multiple copies of, of books that I can afford that are cheap like this hold one and flip the others to be able to buy things like that Tales of Suspense uh, 50 that's, that's uh, just super cool. So anyway, those are all the books I've got to show off to you today. 
As usual, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, of course, it'd really help me out if you did so. Uh, like the video, comment, tell me what uh, books you've picked up recently or what characters you think we should be uh, specking on that you are excited about. And then also my question of the week. You know, I mentioned Acts of Vengeance was this cool company storyline uh, that I read when I was just collecting comics. And so it's probably my favorite one, you know, probably because it meant so much to me as a kid. But what is your favorite uh, company-wide storyline? Of course, there's been lots of good ones. I'm reading through King of Black now on the Marvel app. Uh, you know, we had War of Realms not too long ago. Then you have way back ones like Atlantis Attacks, uh, Acts of Vengeance. Uh, what is your favorite? All right, so I uh, hope to hear from you and look forward to uh, seeing you in the next video.